I don't think people realize that last month we may have hit one of the biggest turning points in the history of Cardano. Our blockchain ecosystem has a great many strengths, but among them is not a widely adopted smart contract programming language. In fact, if Haskell remained as the only smart contract language in Cardano, it would be fair to peg that as the Achilles heel to Cardano's adoption. It's kind of like saying our smart contracts are permissionless, but only if you're a left-handed person over six foot five from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. There just aren't enough Haskell developers. Great language for the base layer blockchain infrastructure for a lot of reasons, but way too small a language for the DAP ecosystem. That all changed last month with the unveiling of Cardano's big secret, the midnight sidechain where smart contracts will be in TypeScript. Ready? Let's go. Today, we are going to discuss this title shift in Cardano from the tiny Haskell language to the gigantic ocean of JavaScript and TypeScript, the continuing wave of public recognition that AI is going to be everything we hoped and maybe feared. Plutus smart contracts written by AI, the possibility that SBF associates are turning on him, the perfect Cardano holiday song, and in-game ADA transactions and voice chat in a Cardano metaverse coming this month. If you immediately knew last month that the announcement of Midnight was a move not just toward privacy, security, and confidentiality, but also away from the island and the pond and toward the ocean, or if you're finding value in these videos each weekday, please consider delegating to the Army of Spies stake pool, ticker AOS. Let me be super clear right off the bat. I think Haskell was a great choice to build the Cardano base layer infrastructure upon. I think Haskell was a great choice. I'm, I'm super glad Cardano was built on Haskell, at least the Cardano base layer infrastructure. In fact, I found Haskell and functional programming generally to be so interesting that I myself spent many nights over the course of many different months <laughs> trying to become the world's worst Haskell beginner student. Not even Haskell developer, not even Haskell beginner developer, but world's worst Haskell beginner student. And I pro throughout that time, I probably was the world's worst Haskell beginner student. But I think there are some things that everyone should know. I wanted to see what Google would tell us about the human population of the Republic of Haskell, if you will. So I started typing how many Haskell and Google auto completed how many Haskell programmers are there? Not exactly the way I would have written that, but good enough. Let's go. So I got this, a Haskell Wikipedia entry. And then the first, the first substantive entry that wasn't Wikipedia, how many programmers use Haskell? Great. Click on this. According to the TIOBE index in 2021, approximately 0.18% of the world's programmers are using Haskell. Not 10%, not 1%, far less than 1%. We're talking about 0.18% of the world's programmers, according to stackbuilders.com. And then to add insult to injury, they say, we think that this estimate may actually be high. Great. Okay. So if we go down a little further, are Haskell programmers in demand? Is Haskell worth learning? And then the number four entry, is Haskell a dead language? There is a dedicated small community surrounding Haskell today, keeping it from becoming a truly dead programming language from techtarget.com. And a whole bunch of other entries like this, all kind of implying that Haskell is at least perceived to be a hard language. Is Haskell the hardest language? Uh, is Haskell worth learning? Why is Haskell so hard? How long does it take to learn Haskell? What killed Haskell? Uh, so what killed Haskell is the parochialism, the inability to address the needs of the enterprise. Haskell was a stellar performer in certain constraint circumstances, but it was limited in its ability or rather in its desire of its users to address the general problems of the enterprise. What killed Haskell? A lot of, a lot of entries like this, but I think the most important part, whatever you think the reason is, or, you know, the, uh, the, the lack of interest, whatever it is, 
it's resulted in a very small portion of the world's programmers adopting Haskell. This lack of Haskell developers, of course, is not a problem if you're IOG and you can just hire all of the Haskell developers and become the biggest Haskell development shop in the world, basically. But it's a little bit more of a problem if you're trying to get the community to independently build out a DAP ecosystem. In fact, I think it's a great testament to the crazy vibrancy and voracious nature of the Cardano community that this many DAPs are building on Cardano. Because if you think about it, if you're not a Haskell developer, you probably have to pay a team of Haskell developers to build out your DAP on Cardano. And because of the nature of markets and economies, if you have a very rare skill set, you get to charge some very rare fees for that skill set. This came up recently when a Cardano project, Ardana, seemed to have burned through $10 million, a lot of it community funds. And of course, people ask questions. Where did all this money go? And, you know, predictably, the answer was, well, a lot of it went to Haskell development shops, or a lot of it seemed to have gone to Haskell development shops. You know, a lot of it was now residing in the coffers of those Haskell development shops. And it illustrated the point. This is definitely one way to build out a DAP ecosystem, but is it the best way? But as much as we've always known there were pluses and minuses to Haskell-based Pluto smart contracts, we also knew that Cardano had a plan laid out by Charles in his The Island, The Pond, and The Ocean metaphor. The idea was that if crypto and the blockchain world were an island, and on that island was a pond that represented Ethereum and Solidity and the EVM world, there was also an ocean, an ocean of all of the other developers who have nothing to do with crypto or any kind of blockchain ecosystem. And that ocean of developers was far, far bigger, far more immense than anything on the island or in the pond. And Cardano's future would be in that ocean because while the base layer, the Cardano base layer blockchain would run on Haskell, we would have all kinds of other layers in our ecosystems, side chains and L2s, a veritable layer verse. At least I called it a layer verse in this video, episode number 177 in September of 2021. The idea was that we would have this entire universe of other layers beyond just the Cardano base layer. And you could do any arbitrary thing you want on these other layers. You could make whatever sacrifices you want. We still have the blockchain trilemma. We have competing interests in scaling, decentralization, and security. And a lot of people like the, the sort of balance of those three that's been made on the Cardano base layer. But if you want to achieve much higher scaling or you know, much, much, much less decentralization or any arbitrary mix of those three elements on any additional layer to Cardano, you could do that and we could build out all of these arbitrary layers that do whatever you like. Included in that is doing whatever you like in terms of programming languages. But we hadn't seen, there was a lot of, you know, a lot of things coming with Mamba and third party side chains being built out and things like that. But we hadn't seen anything really, really big out of IOG yet. That was until the unveiling of Midnight a couple of weeks ago. And Midnight was a pretty well-kept secret given how big this project was. And secrecy about the project seemed appropriate because a lot of the fanfare uh, around the launch or the unveiling of Midnight had to do with it being a confidentiality enabled blockchain. Of course, people immediately started calling Dust a privacy token or a privacy coin. And there are a lot of reasons why it's probably better on a regulatory basis to call it a confidentiality enabled blockchain, or in this case, a data protection based blockchain that safeguards sensitive commercial and personal data. 
protecting fundamental freedoms of association, commerce, and expression for developers, companies, and individuals. I can certainly get behind protecting those fundamental freedoms. But the part of Midnight that was the most interesting to me, the part that I think is a really big turning point for Cardano, shows up in this second paragraph. Midnight will enable developers to quickly build and deploy data protection first dApps using many programming languages, starting with TypeScript. This is a huge turning point that I think will be super key for the future of Cardano. As much as I appreciate that the Cardano blockchain was built on Haskell, we've kind of been toiling in the relative obscurity of Haskell for a long time. And now, all of a sudden, there's another possible programming language. Sure, we've always had Marlowe, which is kind of like a low-code solution, and I think that's great too. But this is big because TypeScript is very clearly in that ocean of developers we've always been talking about. If we come here to Wikipedia, Wikipedia tells us in the first two lines, it is a superset of JavaScript. Existing JavaScript programs are also valid TypeScript programs. This is tremendously huge because if we're in TypeScript world, that means we're also in JavaScript world. And JavaScript is one of, if not the biggest language in the world. It's the biggest language out in that ocean because almost every website uses JavaScript. When we look at survey after survey, poll after poll, what we find is that JavaScript is at or near the top of the list. You can see in this list, JavaScript pops up. This was a, an online survey. JavaScript shows up as number one. TypeScript is proper is down here in number five. But again, if you're in TypeScript world, you're really in JavaScript world. And Haskell, if we scroll down the list here, Haskell, of course, doesn't even make it on the list because we already said it's apparently less than 1%. And this poll only goes down to 3.25%. If I just Google what is the most popular programming language, the first entry I get names five different languages, including JavaScript. But the next entry is a 2022 entry from bootcamp.berkeley.edu, which says, JavaScript is the most common coding language in use today around the world. This is for a good reason. Most web browsers, browsers utilize it, and it's one of the easiest languages to learn. This is why Midnight is such a gigantic turning point for Cardano. We go from one of the most obscure languages in Haskell to one of the biggest languages in TypeScript and JavaScript. I wouldn't be surprised if a huge number of the developers who come into Midnight are coming there really for TypeScript, for the availability of TypeScript, and just looking at all the confidentiality, privacy, data protection stuff as a nice bonus that they can sort of optionally use. Meanwhile, the rest of crypto and really all of tech is still obsessed with one thing right now, and that's OpenAI's release of ChatGPT. This Microsoft research engineer put it well. He says, Chat GPT was dropped on us just a bit over 24 hours ago. It's like you wake up to the news of the first nuclear explosion and you don't know yet what to think about it, but you know the world will never be the same again. This poster was even willing to ask, have you realized yet that the only skill worth working on is how to prompt the AI? I already find that pretty hard to disagree with. If you don't, I think you might be changing your mind in the next couple of years. And it turns out that ChatGPT is already willing to take a crack at Cardano Plutus smart contracts. This post says, uh, did developing on Cardano just get a whole lot easier? I understand it's not perfect, but wow, that is some fast prototyping. This simple prompt, write a smart contract using Plutus that implements a Dutch auction was enough to get chat GPT to return. Here's an example of a smart contract using Plutus that implements a Dutch auction. And sure enough, chat GPT took a crack at writing this Plutus smart contract. And it's not perfect. Actual Cardano Plutus smart contract developers had some comments, some criticisms of uh, the uh, code that chat GPT spit out. But I mean, this thing is, what? what is it now, like 48 hours old, a couple of days old? It's kind of brand new. It's still got a lot of learning it can do. And I have a strange feeling that coding attempts like this are going to get a lot better a lot faster.
In the ongoing FTX saga, it looks like Caroline, the head of Alameda, was spotted at a coffee shop in New York, and people were quick to map out exactly how long it would take her to walk to the U.S. Attorney's Office to roll over on SBF and become an informant. If there's a shred of truth in any of that, it looks like we may be watching a contest to see who can be the very best little informant. SBF posted this, Representative Waters and the House Committee on Financial Services, once I have finished learning and reviewing what happened, I would feel like it was my duty to appear before the committee and explain. I'm not sure what will happen by the 13th, but when it does, I will testify. Innocent Sam is trying to discover what happened. He's like an investigator. He's investigating what happened because he has no idea that he will show up on the 13th and become the best little informant. Are your loved ones already starting to subject you to the torture of old timey Christmas music? You don't have to put up with that. You don't have to tolerate that anymore. Nido is bringing you some Cardano themed Christmas music. Check it out at his Twitter profile. Finally, I think you all already know what I really want for this holiday season. I want for us to be able to begin our Army of Spies Friday night hangouts. What's required for this? Voice chat. We need voice chat in one of our Cardano Metaverse projects. Given that, I was very interested to find out about this post inside the Carta Station Discord today. What's coming in December? We're still building through these turbulent times, and here's what you can expect from us later this month. Uh, In-game transactions with ADA and their native currency. And most importantly, right down here, voice integration. The days of jumping into Carter Station while in a Discord voice channel are almost over. In this release, we are launching version one of the voice chat feature. This sounds great. I don't know how good or not good version one of the voice chat feature is going to be, but at least they're launching voice chat. This means we could actually have an army of spies get together in Carta Station maybe this month. It sounds like if things go well, if things go according to plan for Carta Station, we could maybe do that this month in Carta Station. They say these features will be available on the 19th of December. Very interesting. We'll have to we'll have to see when this actually launches. We'll have to see how good it is. But if it is, this might be the first opportunity we have to actually have a little army of spies get together in the metaverse. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are too. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.